Hey everyone, Ben Cooper Radio, episode 521, I think, but talking of numbers and talking of how long this podcast has been around, the guest I'm talking to today has actually been on the show a couple of times before and will probably want some kind of plaque, maybe some kind of footnote, maybe his name on my spare room door or something. Uh, mate, James Haskell, welcome back. Hello. I can't believe it. 521 podcasts. Yeah, mate. That's insane. That is an amazing achievement in itself. Commitment. You pat yourself on the back. I know you will be because you always pat yourself on the back. But... <laughs> Takes one to know one. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does, it does. And I do want a plaque. And I, I mean, I think if it wasn't for my two episodes, ratings would have, hit, would have dipped down and business would have failed. But I'm glad I'm back in to pep it up. Is this the third time you've been on? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is the third time, yeah. And the last time you were on, you were still actively playing rugby, still chasing the egg. Yeah. Mate, how does it feel now retirement has fully sunken in? Like, are you missing the game? So, I'll be completely honest with you. It's like I never played rugby. It, it is. Yeah, it is genuinely like I had never... It's like it happened to somebody else. I have no, Apart from um, my podcast, House of Rugby, and obviously I watch bits and pieces, I don't have anything to do with it. I don't... My house has got... Bits of, you know, some, some memorabilia around, but contrary to what people think, it's not like a complete shrine to me where every room was plastered in England caps, photographs of me with my shirt off, uh, you know, uh, sort of videos of me doing, you know, highlight reel things. It's, um, but it's bizarre. I honestly don't feel like I ever played. I, I feel like I'm living a completely different life. And it's very, it's very odd when I go to places because I've done a few things since finishing playing and now I'm known for some different things. And it's very odd because, especially when I go to rugby centric stuff, people are like, oh, we really liked you playing for England, we did this or did that. I'm like, I don't really remember ever doing it. You know, it's so weird. In terms of transitioning, I think this is a, an amazing thing about kind of just moving on in life and pivoting. Um, obviously, I've never played for England and I'm about 1% of the rugby player that you are. But I, I retired, uh, I think it was at Christmas. And I, before then, I was just I just kept dabbling and kept going back for a game, like you know, doing a game a month sort of thing. And it's not until you fully leave and you commit to other stuff that you actually almost like move forward in a meaningful way. I suppose did you find that you basically just had to move on to become like whatever James Haskell is now? So it was obviously a very pretty scary time when I when I retired, just because I didn't know. Uh, it obviously, happened earlier than I wanted it to. It happened through injury. It was very frustrating at Northampton because I was welcomed by the, uh, the club in a really nice way. I was treated really, really well. So was my family. I wanted to play more for them. I only got five appearances, and I was trying my my, my ass off to to get on the field. So to give in to that was very frustrating, and to end my England career, but you know, but just before a World Cup was was it was even worse. You know, I wanted to try to to play. On, I did everything. I think Eddie Jones would have given me any opportunity, uh, and which he did do. You know, he tried to give me a last game at Twickenham, you know, England versus versus the Barbarians to play for England. Everything to get the opportunity. I just couldn't couldn't run anymore because um, my my ankle and my toe kind of gave up the gave up the ghost really. And I think you know I was pretty scared about what I was going to do. Um, you know, all of my business stuff is kind of you know my wife actually Chloe kind of identified it for me. She was like, look. You know, everything you do is about performing. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, you're a performer. You know, you're like, you want to perform. Your DJing's performing. Your public speaking's performing. Rugby's performing. If you've got a crowd, you're performing. You know, everything. So you need to focus your life around what you enjoy, like TV, presenting, social media. It's all performing. Don't do anything you don't want to do. But obviously, all of that is out of my hands. You know, people have to pay you to come and talk. People have to pay you to come and DJ. It's not like I'm creating my own business. I've done business. I've had a fitness business. I've written books. I've done everything myself. But actually, it really didn't capture my my passion as, as the things I've, I've listed. So there was a bit of fear there. And I think it was actually down to Eddie Jones really inviting me. I went over to Japan for the World Cup. I did the games. I didn't go to any games live, actually. Uh, and I got an opportunity to go to the final with England. Um, and I decided not to go. I didn't accept the, the World Cup ticket. I basically said I wanted to sit with Chloe sit with my friends on House of Rugby, watch it from 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 a distance because I think if they'd won, uh, I wouldn't know what to have done. You know, I wouldn't I would have felt like a, a spare part if they lost. How would you how do you con how do you console people? You know, how do you do deal with that? It would have been so awkward. Uh, and I just felt that 
um, you know, I, I wasn't right thing to do. And I was, I was a bit, you know, I was getting a bit jealous of watching the guys play. I was, you know, wanted to be involved. I kept questioning, could I have done more? Uh, and actually, Eddie Jones invited me into England camp on the last week before um, the, the, so the South Africa game. Basically, thanked me in front of everybody, um, got me involved. I spent, I spent half a day with them watching trainings, welcomed by everybody, made to feel like I was part of it. And it basically laid the ghost to rest for me. So once the World Cup had finished, I wanted, you know, I, I obviously wanted the guys to win. I was desperate for them to win. I would have been very jealous if they had won. But I, but you know, I played, I did everything I could do to help that that squad, and and, and everyone was very complimentary and recognised that. Um, and I was devastated when they lost because you know it was such an opportunity for us. But then once that was done, my rugby career was done. I have, I had no thoughts, but I haven't missed it. I haven't wanted to go back and play. Um, because I just basically put my head down and got straight into a mad summer where I, where I you know, I DJed for for um, Craig David and Ibiza and Ibiza Rocks. I, you know, travelled to I think nine countries. I was doing, you know, I was doing three speaking gigs a week, one DJ gig a week. I was training for my first MMA fight. I hadn't had a minute to think, and actually. It kind of all that adjustment has made a, a massive difference and I was able to get over it and then move on to the next thing. And the, the weird thing is now, I'm in a weird situation again where everybody is with a corona, but actually all my job stuff again is public facing. So I haven't actually got anything to do for the first time in my life. And I'm a workaholic similar to, to yourself. I've never stopped. I've never really properly taken days off. So I've actually for the first time sat down sometimes and gone, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? Like, what, 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 what am I doing? And then, I, you know, of course, I was like, right, I'm going to do live DJ sets. Of course, I'm going to, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll work on a new media bio. I will, uh, I'm actually writing a book. I will do, I will create, I will create stuff, which is, and obviously we do house rugby every week, but it's a very weird, surreal situation. And watching Chloe, who's kind of working busier than ever, because of online training, online clients, writing a new book. We're, we're, we're complete opposite ends. She's always worked hard, but I've always been out coming back at like 12 at night from doing a speaking gig in, you know, in, in you know, Plymouth and, and flying back the next day all over the place. And now I'm there like going, well, what should, we, what should we do? A bit more Xbox? And she's like, you don't even like Xbox. I was like, shut up, as I'm trying to like <laughs> play Grand Theft Auto. Oh, where is Oh man, mate! Uh, just as a side note, the House of Rugby podcast is is brilliant. Uh, I love it. It's nearly it's one of three podcasts I listen to every week without fail. Um, you bring a real refreshing uh, bit of well, it's just a light hearted approach to rugby. But in all honesty, I've loved some of the more candid and honest chats that you've had recently. Because in professional sport, everyone dances around problems because there's the media and there's the politics and stuff but all of that's been blown out of the water like sportsmen are basically sat at home doing nothing they're not really sure if they're gonna have a job to come back to in a couple of weeks a couple of months time like it's all a bit fucked up and you're sitting there kind of debating some of the problems that haven't really been debated before properly and if anyone is into rugby or sport i'd recommend the house of rugby because uh it's, it's interesting when you talked about the future of rugby i was like ah oh, mate and it'd be wicked if we used a time like this to reset many businesses, many perspectives, many systems, because we have to find that opportunity in these weird times, surely. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, just on the house rugby stuff, it, it, it's very weird because I got offered that, got offered the gig with, with Alex Payne. And actually, originally, I think they wanted Jim Hamilton to do the, to do the podcast. I don't think they, they didn't approach me. So they weren't, I don't think they were that keen on me or that, or, that, or that sure about it. Alex Payne, I think, kind of pushed them. And in the first episode, the first, and you've always been really supportive of, of it, and you've always messaged me and said you really enjoyed it, which I appreciate. Um, they they sent me, you know, they, they, we basically did the first two episodes, and we both broke all of their records that they'd set for the six months after two episodes. And I think they kind of, you know, they weren't sure what it what it, what it was going to necessarily be. And we looked at um, we looked at some of the figures the other day, and we've had something like twelve million. Uh, were listeners and subscribers or something on it, and we've had something like sixty-five million views and and or listens on on social media from just the podcast, and it kind of turned into a bit of a phenomenon, really, where every episode is a completely different thing. So, you know, what we didn't want it to be was like really laddy and, and aggressive, which is obviously I don't know why they chose me, but didn't want it to be laddy and aggressive, but we wanted it to be kind of truthful. But it's become about stories, it's become about personalities. It's like every week. You know, it will be. We had Matt Hampson on yesterday, which was funny, but 
really emotional and really kind of profound. You know, we had Ed Jackson on, we had Billy Vinopola on, you know, opening up about his, kind of some of the problems he's had with alcohol and bits and pieces, you know. Then we've had Ben Ryan and, you know, tears in your eyes about people dying in Fiji. Then we've had Rory Best and Sean O'Brien, where it's a laugh, it's a laugh a minute. Um, and it, it, you know what, it's made me, I think it's changed people's perspective of me um, and shown people that uh, a different side to me. And, you know, I, I, I'm shocked every week about the amount of messages and stuff. Because when I did like my Bin Juice 15 the other day, you know, I forget that people listen to this podcast. So I get people going, mate, I haven't spoken to you in years. Can't believe you threw me under the bus. <laughs> everyone, every, everyone at work's been giving me shit. Nobody's supposed to know about that story. I'm like, fucking hell. Sorry, mate. I didn't even you know. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't. Because it's me, Alex, and Tins, or me and a guest. Um, but it, it's it's massively, you know, and what's interesting is that I would walk down the street, sort of pre I'm a Celeb, and people would say, Matt, love House Rugby, love House Rugby, House, house Rugby is so funny. You know, we sold out a live show, 1,600 people in, in Wales, of all places, in an hour and a half, without without really doing two posts about it. Um, and, that, and none of us on the show did it. So it's kind of turned into a bit of a phenomenon, but it, it's important to keep being honest with yourself. And I never want to be controversial for the sake of being controversial. Like everything I say is how I feel. And what the best kind of credit for me is that people, you know, people say, like yourself say nice things, but, but fellow players go, mate, it's like you're in my head. Like, how did you think that? We all think that. Fucking hell, you're right about that. You're right about this. And uh, that's what's important, really, because it's not meant to be political. You know, the, the, I think the biggest credit to it is that... Um, I get messages from people going, I don't like rugby. I didn't know anything about rugby, but I listen to House Rugby because I love all the stories. And that's what, if you don't even have to like sport, I don't even have to ever watch the minute about rugby. If you want to hear about personalities and funny stories and, and emotional journeys, it's, it's, it is what it is. And it's, it's grown out of all kind of proportion in respect to everything. But, you know, it can easily, it can easily fall down. So you just got to enjoy it while, it's, while it lasts, really. Yeah, well, don't stop doing it because I love listening to it. I've listened to every episode today apart from the Matt Hampson one. I haven't got to that one yet. Um, but, mate, it's brilliant. It's refreshing. It's candid. As you say, every show's different. So, um, mate, fucking high five. I've been doing this show, what, seven years, and I think I've had 12 million downloads. So it just shows how... Yeah, how fucking is that? But it's awesome. I'm just showing how well the house yeah, yeah. is doing. It's fucking it's amazing. But, but it, I think it, you know what it is? It's, the bit, I, one of the things we always talk about business, and I've fallen foul of it many times, it's something that Chloe's had to remind me and I have to remind myself, is that, you know, when any of you do, you stay in your lane. You know, like I, I, I with the rugby podcast stuff, you know, people go, well, you know, don't talk about rugby. I was like, listen, there is 50 other podcasts that do a better job of talking about nausey shit than, than, than we do. So do we just do what we do well. And, you know, I've listened to your podcast for, for years. And what you do in your, in your, in your lane is like, unbelievable you know you number what you've been number one so many times for so many different different things and to have that level of 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 download is incredible you know and then we all look at you know and then you you, you do an online training thing and then you look at the fucking body coach is ruining it for everyone and that fuck has got you know 20 million people watching one video so you can sit there at home going you know i've done terribly or you go do you know what what we're doing is great because i because i then i then got upset with um i was like well i want to be number one across everywhere everyone then you look at peter peter crouch and he's number one on all yep. sports podcasting. I'm like, fucking Peter Crouch. Crouchy. Oh, Crouchy. I, I've got to be funnier than Peter Crouch. What's going on? But um, but sadly, apparently I'm not. So so we just got to just keep digging away. Uh, apparently his podcast is amazing. I've never listened. Um, perhaps I need to. See why he's number one. See why he's better than James Hask. I don't want to. I don't want to listen to it because I, I, I know I'll find it funny and I know I'll enjoy it and I'll just be really jealous. Then I'll overcompensate on House of Rugby and it'll all fall apart. <laughs> oh, mate. So athlete life coming back to it you're not away from athlete life it's just different before you went into lockdown you were training for mma sounded like you were absolutely loving it is all of that stuff still on the cards and you're just sort of icing yourself in your garage at home or what's the crack so look I, I, the fight's been suspended or postponed um it's a very weird situation because i again talking about you know agreeing to do something when i when i just finished playing and i i, I I really enjoyed the intensity of it and, you know, training for something different. And also, for all the reasons that I said I wanted to do it, you know, bar for, you know, obviously good financial reasons was, was being a, an individual sportsman. I've always been a team sportsman. Being, um, testing myself, being a big guy, 
People always assume that you're tough just because you're big. That's not true. Assuming you can fight because you're big, but that's not true, you know. Um, and I've basically known the guys from London Shoot Fight since I was was uh, 18 and uh, or 19, I should say. And, um, you know, I, they were the first person that people I came to when I got this opportunity. So, listen, lads, will you train me? If, is it on my mat? And they were like, no, very keen to, to do it. I, I found the journey, you know, probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, I think made harder by the fact that I've already had a, a, you know 18 and a half seasons of being a professional rugby player, learning a complete new sport that has so much technical facets in every area of it that you could you know you could be doing it for eight years and still not have even scratched the surface of 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 everything. Um, and you know emotionally it's very difficult to to turn up on and every week and have to go and f- fight someone you know, every day to go in there and push yourself to, you know, you're probably your breaking point, you know, conditioning wise. So, you know, you're, you're working for two and a half hours nonstop. You're burning probably two and a half thousand calories, maybe more in that period of time. You know, you're sweating like you fucking never sweated, plus getting filled in, plus physically exerting yourself, you know, having to fight teammates that, you know, you've got no beef with. And obviously that's just, it's like training, you know, but it's, it's, it's not like live tackling practice. It's, you know, trying to punch this guy's head off and choke him out, and you know, while he's trying to do that to you. Um, obviously, the, the limitations that happen to your, to your body after a certain career and stuff—it's it's very difficult. So I was very keen to get to the first fight and to do that and to, and to assess it afterwards. Now it's been postponed. You know, I'm still training every day. I've obviously taken my foot off the gas. I'm, I actually feel really kind of quite good. I had a bit of a not a mini meltdown, but I basically was showing all the signs of like hugely overtraining. Um, I wasn't sleeping. My body wasn't recovering. I basically had a meltdown. I had to sort of call up Matt Lovell, um, the England nutritionist, or was he the nutritionist, the Man City kind of a guru, and say to him, look, you know, I need to get all my bloods done here. And he, we basically had a full rebuild. I re-looked at my supplementation, re-looked at my, my hydration protocols and everything else. And I got back feeling brilliant. Um, then the lockdown happened and... You know, I've just been trained, but I actually tore my pec as well, which not a lot of people knew about. I'd never done it before, never torn a muscle. And it was it was to the middle of wrestling. And I basically felt it like essentially what felt like paper tear. And um, I've had to rehab that. So while I'm training, I'm just back doing light shadow boxing, doing, um, you know, a lot of banded stuff, started doing weight stuff through it. But that's been a hell of a, a thing. You know, I, I, would, I wouldn't have been able to train for five weeks anyway. Um, so I'm kind of quite glad that the thing got postponed because it would have been touch and go whether I would have been able to make it. You know, do I want to, you know, when, when this is all over again, we're going to have to make a decision because there's no end in sight at the moment as to when we'll be back and, and everything else. But I'm still preparing for the fight. I'm still looking forward to trying to get the cage for the first time. Um, but it's very hard to do when you're on your on your own. You can only just keep your cardio up and build your, build your strength up and rehab an injury. There's not much more you can do, really. So apart from that, in uh, your workout time at the moment, are you in the garage with the missus doing the booty, booty plus volume three? <laughs> Chloe would be very upset if you ever thought she'd have ever booty plus. She's fucking going mad. <laughs> she lifts weights like a machine. She doesn't believe in any of that shit. Uh, so I tell her, I, you know, I know you two are mates, I'm going to say that Ben Cooper suggested you were doing a booty workout in the gym and she'll come around and wrap a fucking barbell around your head. Um, <laughs> She you knows, so I'm I'm basically doing so our training's always been very different. That's why they always say that, you know, couples who train together stay together. That's why it's all lovely stuff on TikTok where everyone's fucking tapping their feet and doing press ups and stuff. Uh, I mean, it's just bollocks. So we did a little like home workout stuff using body weight, which was which was great. We put on YouTube, um, which was actually sensible. But I'm basically doing so at the moment I do my rehab stuff on my shoulder and I'm basically doing blocks of conditioning. So on on um, Monday was uh, did about 35 minutes watt bikes. It's about 20k different intervals and some upper body rehab. Yesterday was it was uh, five well four sets of Tabata, 20 on 10 off on the ver- so first versa five minutes, rest a minute battle ropes, back to versa, back to battle ropes, and then 550 feet as fast as you can. Um, and then to, and then to later tonight will be some actual upper body weights. Tomorrow because it's all blocks of five minutes for the rounds, will be uh, flat out versa, trying to get nine, 950 feet in, or metres, whatever it's feet, potentially, in five minutes, which is carnage. That versa climate is the hardest piece of fitness equipment on there. It, 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 honestly, I haven't done leg weights for ages. My legs are bigger than ever from the watt bike and from the versa climate. They're just a pump they go on. I can't walk the next day. It's madness. Nice. Um, with your home training... It essentially sounds like you're almost doing what you can with the tools that you got, and 
the reason why I bring that up is you'll probably get loads of comments and messages at the moment. You know, you're an athlete. People look up to you physically. I mean, I don't know why, but um, <laughs> uh, and a lot of people are going like, you know, how do I stay fit during lockdown? And so many people I've just answered with like, like do what you can. Like you can't go to the gym anymore. So box that off, deal with it, accept it and literally do what you can. The, then the other thing you've got to deal with is your nutrition. Like don't sit on the sofa and sit there mindlessly eating shit because then you'll put on weight. So eat as you would, eat well, do what you can. And the chances are you won't, you know, lose all your gains and you'll all, you'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a real, you know, we talked about it before. I think there's a real laziness around, A, people's own personal training. You know, I think humans, it's a path of less resistance we're always searching for, want to be spoon-fed stuff. And you throw in, you know, you throw in a lockdown and everyone's panicking about, you know, gains and everything else like that. It's like, look, if you have no weights and no resistance, you know, you're you're not going to be building huge amounts of muscle unless you're a, unless you're a newbie, right? However, you're able to still maintain, you know, through good nutrition and through training, using your body weight, using, you know, I know it's cliche. I said to Chloe, let's roll her eyes, but you know, going to the supermarket and get some heavy tin beat, you know, whatever you've got, making stuff happen, you know, with lot even logs from a fire, whatever it might be, trying to get some resistance, but actually. You know, you're able to do a pretty killer workout, you know, in probably about 20 minutes, literally just using your body weight. And there's such a variety of exercise. All you've got to do is, is take 10 minutes to Google various different things and get an idea and a clear picture. And then, you know, nutrition things, people are eating out of boredom uh, because, you know, they're, 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 they're you know, not sure what to do. They're obviously at home with their kids a lot. Kids sometimes have treats. So, you know, they then start snacking on what the kids got because they know it's in the cupboard. It's just putting it's just putting some a normal foundation bits and pieces in, which is if you go shopping, don't buy all the treats because you will eat them. So you know, be be clean with that. Use the equipment you've got in front of you. Your body being the best tool ever. Uh, you know, variety is important. Getting it done is important. You know, sticking to a routine. So if you used to wake up in the morning, go and train, and then go to work, wake up in the morning, train, and start your work day. You used to work at the end of the day, you know, do all your big work, do whatever you're supposed to do, train at the end of the day, stick to the routine, which is really important. It's what Chloe talked to me about when we first, um, you know, got home. She was like, listen, I think we need a routine because it's very easy to think, you know, watch the clock go by and you start getting tired and, and everything else. So I would say all those things are very important to maintaining stuff. But I, you know, I vary what I do all the time. And sometimes I, I'm lucky because I've got some, some equipment in my gym, but Actually, a lot of the time at the moment, you know, I would use my body weight. So shadow boxing for, 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 for condition done properly is horrific. You know, running on the spot is horrific. Body weight squats, repeats are horrific. Burpees is horrific. All these things, you can maintain a reasonable physique. You can start training if you've never trained before because you can't really mess up with body weight exercises, you know, without. And I think a lot of people could benefit from doing more stuff with body weight as opposed to rushing uh, you know, to pick up a, a, a weight and lift it very badly. I think it's quite a good thing. Get all your shit in order. Learn to a proper press up. Learn to a proper pull up. Learn to a proper body weight squat. Learn to do a lunge. And then when when this quarantine finishes, you can go to the gym and actually start you know lifting properly, as opposed to not being able to do any of these things and then going, yeah, well I can bench one sixty. Yes, but you can't do a press up properly. So what's the point? Mm. Yeah, I always frame it as a period of learning something new as well like if you haven't got a barbell how about you try and challenge yourself um body weight wise like google a couple of people that do like calisthenics for example they've got loads of ways to do really fucking hard stuff when it comes to your body weight like master the frog stance and then master the handstand and then master coming away off on the wall like that's great for your core your shoulders opening up scapular retraction like all that stuff um i think the problem is is people try and replicate what they've been doing to a home environment which is pretty much impossible unless yeah. you're doing body weight before it so you've literally just got to turn it on his head and do something different do something new learn and also yeah and i think just looking at different energy systems you're going to you're going to use and also different uh training modality so you know i try and so you know when i was a rugby player a lot of what you do is kind of high intensity the whole the whole time which is not great because your body doesn't ever fully recover so what I tried to do is start my week off with like some some longer distance. It's still in, it's still challenging, but it's not that high intensity stuff. You know, the next day is then a bit more high intensity. Then you know because my goals are obviously you know to become a cardio machine because that's going to help me with the fighting. I you mean, know, maintain my my physique through vanity and through health reasons because I think a lot of people 
are forgetting that lots of studies have shown that you know maintaining more mu- muscle uh, or, or healthy muscle it helps you fight off diseases and everything else as opposed to being a big blob you know who's unhealthy doesn't exercise you know you're much more likely to, be able to fight off diseases and recover if you're healthy you know and and so this is a you know doing some exercise every day is important you don't have to become a, a bodybuilder but you know you should be able to you know you if you can't run because so you can do some stuff in you know with, with your body weight and i i vary that variety through the time and try different things you know so it might be five or six weeks i might try and focus really if i'm ever lifting weights on time under tension you know i started doing some tim um, tim ferris stuff you know five seconds up five seconds down the slowest possible rate I could go, you know, trying to get over seven reps to to absolute complete failure. I stopped doing that. I'm now doing a lot more, um, you know, one bar workouts to try to just add that cardio element. So I'm doing stuff for time. I I add to batter in longer distance, you know, short and sharp. I just tried to add that variety. And actually in this period of time, because we don't know when it's going to end, you can play around with all these things and then you just match it up with good nutrition. You know, if anyone doesn't understand about nutrition, there's obviously different levels of things you can get involved with. If, you know, if you're a complete beginner, then looking at plate composition, I think, is always really important. Um, you know, if you look at your plate and the, your first priority is your protein and, you, and you've got nothing on there that looks like protein, and you've got loads of chips and, and you know, more carbs and stuff and, and breaded something, you, you know, you probably, haven't, you, you probably haven't started the best. Then if you look next, you go, where's all the fibre coming from? Well, if you've got no fibre on the plate, then, you know, if you're not doing any training, why have you got a mountain of carbohydrates? All those kind of things are simple, but actually for a lot of people who will want to undertake quite a nice uh, nutritional plan, tracking is great at home because you're in charge of the food and you've got a set of scales next to you. So people who go, oh, I don't have time to weigh my food. God, you guys are such nerds. You're like, well, actually, you've got all the time in the world. So I'll tell you what you do. Get a pair of scales from Amazon because Amazon is still delivering. And just start weighing stuff and going, do you know what? My bowl of cereal in the morning that I had that was like crunching up cornflakes, which was covered in sugar, I had no idea. Put it into my fitness cup. I didn't realize I was eating this. You know, getting to lunchtime going, you've had no protein. You've been having piles of sugar and fats. That's a great iron, I think, for, for, for people. So that's the advice I'm trying to give to, to people is just keep training, keep a routine, have, have fun, enjoy it. But also see it as an opportunity, like you said, to, to maybe – knuckle down on a few things to see what you can do with your body because you might not build you might not be a bodybuilder by the end of it but you can get lean as fuck and people go well you know chloe talks about it all the time and i get i used to when i was doing much more stuff in the fitness world women say i want to you know i want to tone up oh my god i want to tone well toning is reduction in body fat to re, to you know reveal the muscle that was underneath there's no such thing as toning muscle so if you're in charge of your own food how about you reduce some of the calories and let's fucking tone in brackets Never use that word again. Let's show some lean muscle and see what see what it's about. I know you'll agree with me on this. All of that is underpinned by the mindset that you bring to it. Uh, on the House of Rugby, you talk about like psychology in the game that's not talked about, and we always talk about the mindset of an athlete. And ultimately, the mindset of the athlete is to find solutions to move you forward one, two, three, four percent. So the people that have got the right mindset will see this as an opportunity to maybe learn more about nutrition, maybe do an online course. They might see it as an opportunity to mix up their training and try Googling some stuff. But it, you know, as soon as you've got this kind of short-sighted mentality, you'll be the person that messages James Haskell and goes, oh, how do I keep fit at home? Like, and you might just reply with fucking on, jogging on the spot would start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And no, I think you're right. I think the, the mindset stuff with all of this thing is, is really important. I think, look... You can't underestimate how difficult the situation is for people. People are dying, first and foremost. People are losing loved ones and not getting to spend time with them in hospital. People are financially being ruined by this. People are, are, are struggling. And, you know, it's not, it's not to be laughed at in any way, shape or form. But I think for, for, the, for the middle bracket of people that are able to kind of survive the situation, albeit under pressure, you know, you have to see this as an opportunity to, for self-development and to stay, to stay sane and not waste this time. You know, you will never, ever have a period of time like this ever again, touch wood. Um, or there will be glimpses of this, you know, I'm sure in the future with the, the cycling of quarantine and release. But I actually think, you know, uh, I, I, the first thing I signed up to was an online DJ course when I when I did this, you know, to, to actually do some betterment. You know, I thought to myself, you know what, I want to read every night. I actually want to stick to a bit of a routine. Um, uh, you know, I thought to myself, you know what, I can, I can train. I reduced my calories um, because... Uh, you know, I obviously wasn't, but, but you know, d- 
doing the same amount of training. Chloe's Chloe tracks very hard. I, I, I was a bit fair weather with tracking. I have tracked religiously for a long period of time. I'm at home and I'm a bit more intuitive now. Um, and all these things I've put into place, meaning that I, I'm actually quite enjoying this period because while I'm not earning any money and there's still bills going out, it's actually a time for reflection, self-development, to spend time with your partners and loved ones, to, to enjoy the weather if you're lucky enough to have a garden, to go for the walk, you know, to, 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 to really kind of do all the things you've, you've told yourself you didn't have time for. And that's the real thing. And, I, and actually, my, my biggest downfall is I think, you know, we talked about the routine, is just setting yourself a timer and going, you know, Chloe's, it was Chloe's advice really saying, look, you know, set yourself a timer so you can, you know, go, if you want to play Xbox, for example, set yourself an hour and get up your ass, do something else. And every night I've been barbecuing. I wanted to cook dinner every night. I'm not a big cook normally, but I wanted to cook dinner. And Chloe's like, you're, you know, you're quite manic at night. And I was like, because you know what? I'm fulfilling tasks. I, I'm a task orientated person. And humans react very well to like ticking stuff off. So I'm like running from one room to the other because I'm actually doing something. Whereas normally, you know, I set myself an hour, no social media. And I know, I think you were the one who told me this potentially about switching all distractions off going, right, here's an hour to do emails, finish. I'll go on to social media. But in this period of time, it's very easy to switch from email to phone to Netflix to make yourself a cup of tea to, or oh, I listen to that music. Oh, I'm going to do a FaceTime and do a podcast. And I, I think maintaining that routine and seeing this as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to develop, I think it's really important. Mm. Uh, I, I've said that a lot and I know we've talked a lot so I might have said it I've even been quite extreme in telling people to switch off the news a lot more than maybe they are at the moment and it's only because I found that with what's happening it's very easy to get really engrossed in the news and the conversation and all the little hearsay stories and shit and I was like I'm not getting anything positive out of this I'm going to watch the, the one update a day from the Prime Minister uh, and then that's it because otherwise all the rest of it is just bullshit like it's just people guessing at what might happen in the future or whatever um, and I thought that's taking time away from me working on my business spending time with my wife like all of that shit yeah I think you're exactly right like we watch you know the headlines I flick so basically my, my routine is the morning so I wake up give Chloe a cuddle we get up she gets the shower I'll sit and I'll go Sky Sky, uh, Sky News like flick through just look at the headlines um Sky Sports, go on Instagram quickly, then I'll get up and then we'll watch a bit of the headlines at breakfast just to see what the story is and that's it. Because the rest of it is conjecture. You know, back in the day, you know, when you had three TV programs or three channels and you didn't have 24 hour news, people have to fill stuff. So they're getting, they're getting, and there's so much conjecture. You know, you saw it with Boris Johnson uh, when he was unfortunately um, ill. That it had people guessing everything. So what does it mean with a ventilator? And just people just throwing thoughts out with absolutely no with no foundational knowledge, it's, it's the best way you can equate it to is if the coronavirus is, is in a house, it's everybody's on the outside of the, of the windows looking in, and there's only a few people in knowing, and the rest of us are looking through the windows, seeing what people are doing and trying to guess, and then telling, you know, you're on a phone to me in a different area, and I'm going, well, I can see through the window, I think they're doing this. We're all just guessing. Mm. And I just think it's, um, it's important just to, 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 you know, to avoid talking to people. There's always that woman, you know, we'll go with the name Jackie. There's always a Jackie on Facebook who fucking knows better than anyone. She's got a friend of a friend who was Donald Trump's PA's sister who used to work in the Ministry of Defence, who now works at Tesco. She's a member of the NHS, <laughs> a nurse, who says that potentially her neighbour's daughter, who's back to Boris Johnson, was in the, the it's Thursday tomorrow. It's like fucking, like what, what is it? What, it, it, it's just bullshit. And nobody knows. And I think if you've got, all you have to do to be reassured that the world is, is in a very bizarre place is watching Donald Trump do his, oh, his press conferences <laughs> and what he's saying. Like, the guy is the perceived most powerful man in the world. And he just calls people like sloppy Joe Biden. He's like, he, he, you know, Chloe was telling me about it. I had to read, I had to read it this morning. That he basically tried to tell, obviously, the, 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 the you know, um, devolution of power in America. That he was trying to say to all the governors that he could, he could decide everything. And it's like, Donald, you're not king of America. He's like, I do what I want. It's like, well, you actually can't. It's illegal. Well, I, you know, I do what I want. And he's now blaming. He's now he's now reduced, you know, removed funding from the World Health Organization, saying that you know they they sided with China. So there is nothing to be gained other than I would watch the BBC or Sky News and a little bit and stop with the conspiracy theory, stop with the five G and the nanotechnology and all that shit. Just to have a relax, enjoy this time because one the one the one thing that's going to undo people in this period of time is mental health, is overthinking is trying to worry about uh, things you can't control. Just take one day 
at a time, please. And if you start getting that what if thinking, bring yourself back, center yourself, go, do you know what? What's my next job today? Well, it's probably making dinner for the kids. I'm gonna go and maybe do a training session. I'm gonna choose my favorite song. I'm gonna read a chapter of my book. And once I've achieved that, I'll worry about the next thing because we've got no idea and we don't know what the situation is. And everybody keeps asking every member of financial organization, are we gonna have the biggest recession we've ever had? Fucking who knows? But the, probably the likes of it are yes, because we, you know, where's the money? But do we know? We don't know. So stop worrying about it. Yeah, oh, I couldn't agree more, mate. Amazing advice. Um, so what happens for you after lockdown? I can imagine many people want to go out and get the barbecue out and get all their mates around and have loads of beers. Some people want to get straight off on holiday. Some people might want to get straight in the gym. Like, what does James Haskell do on his first day of lockdown release? Well, do you know what I would? Oh. I'd like to go and do something. I'd like to go and pay to get do to do something. That's my like one ambition. Like Chloe and I were talking, and because again, I you know she's been saying to me every day, "What would you like to do when this is over? Where would you like to go?" And I'm like, you know, again, this is massive conjecture. I just said to you know basically a hypocritical saying not to do what I I said to do is essentially we have no idea, for example, what's going to happen with airlines and everything else and, and all the potential. So the world as we know it, I think it's going to be not. It's not going to be. Boris Johnson, hello UK, everyone just go out. It's just not going to happen like that. So everyone, she was talking to me the other night about you know, where, where should we go? Where should we go? I said, I just honestly don't know what the possibility is with any of this. Like, our country is going to let us in. You know, for example, if I go to you know, Ibiza, you know, are the Spanish going to let us in without us quarantining ourselves for a few days? Are we going to have to have health checked? Are we going to have to have shown we've had the thing? Is there going to be any airlines left to be able to go and fly it? We, we don't know. So I would like to go and do something meaningful. Um, you know, like when I say meaningful, I just meant like, I go like to go DJ set outside for somebody or I'd like to go and do like a, a motivational speech. Um, you know, I'm still supporting charity stuff while I'm in, I'm in here in case people are thinking I'm mercenary, like Chloe and I are doing a 20, uh, 12 hour live podcast on uh, Saturday, this Saturday for uh, Sebastian's Action Trust, who like desperately need funding. So we'll get you on. Actually, I'll send you this. We'll get you on, and we can talk. Um, you know, little five minutes about nutrition or whatever it is, because it, you know, we're trying, we're trying to support people. But I just think I'm desperate to to do something like meaningful, do something actually that is doesn't involve me, because I've got the barbecue out. I'm doing live DJ sets, but it's only me, me and Instagram watching it. I've had no. Yeah. There's no interaction with anyone. I, we'd almost, I'd obviously also like to all fly over to Ibiza and then get, you know, get sit in the sun, get an absolute rave up for a, for a week. Um, but that's if I've got any money left by the time we've gone through here. I just, I just don't know. So all I'm worried about is I'm cooking meatball, m- meatballs on the Traeger tonight with fresh garlic bread in a skillet. That's all I give a shit about. And I've got a music production course as soon as we finish the podcast. That's as far as my mind extends in Mate. real terms. Perfect. I said uh, I'll get all my family around for a barbecue so they can meet or they can meet our daughter, and we can uh, we can catch up and shit. Have they not met her yet? Uh, no, we, she got born two weeks ago, so none of our family have met our daughter. Oh, sorry, because I, I was seeing on social media, and I was going to say congratulations. We've got podcasts, but you started talking about me, my favourite topic. <laughs> so we got so congratulations. She looks amazing, but I didn't realise they hadn't met her. I thought you just posted about her on social media, but she would be slightly older than that. Yeah. Um, And like the saddest thing is like, and and this is the reality and this is why people have been trying to get people to stay at home and stuff. Uh, We've actually had a death in the family uh, from Corona. Uh, One of our family members has currently also got symptoms. And that's probably the saddest thing about all of this is that we'll have family members that will never meet our daughter, which is like, you know, that, you know, our first child and all the rest of it. And that's probably the saddest thing about all of this is that, you know, none of it's none of it's going to be planned for people. So much will lose things without any control over, like, you know, uh, oh, so like, let's say your dad's ill. Let's go around and say goodbye. Let's go do this. And like, none of that can happen. That's probably the saddest thing out of all of this. But yeah, we'll have a big barbecue, get the family around, and then get get a bit drunk in the. Because that's what that's what I that's what I said. Um, you know, at the start of my thing, I think. The, the, the most important thing to to remember about it is what you've just reiterated is that people are actually you know dying in large numbers and and people are dying in hospital without being able to visit and go to funerals and do whatever and obviously you, you that's closer to to home you know for, for yourself it this is a bizarre thing and I think it's kind of got lost a little bit in all of the other talk of money or, or and everything else and I think you know, it's important to always recognise the bigger picture and always address it and be fully aware of it and cognizant of it. But I think 
you know, the, the, the motto of literally living one day at a time, uh, not living like, you know, every day is your last, because that's ridiculous, but just living, you know, every day worrying about what you can control uh, is, is probably the best the best piece of advice in this situation. And, and like, you know, it is very sad no one's met your um, your daughter yet, but, you know, I'm sure um, I'm sure when this is over, you know, there will be those opportunities, but I just think our image of what we think it's going to be like is going to be very different, and because of that, it's best just not to focus on it. Because again, you know, I, I, you know Chloe uh, always wants to have something to look forward to. I think because she trains so hard and applies herself, she likes to have a goal. You know, it's like a, it's like a dieting, you know, um, uh, skill. You know, like for example, one of the tips you do to, when people are dieting is you get them to write a list of all the stuff they'd like to eat once they finish dieting. Because that's what I did when I was in the jungle. I fucking wrote on a tree stump in chalk everything I wanted to eat. And that got me through it because I thought by the time I finished, I'm going to have that. And I think people want something to look forward to in this bleak time because there's no, there's no end in sight. But I think sadly, it's a it's a good tool. But you're actually better off getting more solid and having a good day on that day and being the best you can be on that day and and saying, Do you know what, I went to bed two percent better than I was uh, the day before. Maybe by like you said, FaceTiming with a relative and doing a Skype call so they can see your daughter, you know, um, maybe uh, reading a chapter of a book that you think you should read and maybe having a bit of fun or, you know, like you said, doing something you haven't ever done before. That all makes you, you know, one or two percent better. And I think that's the real kind of key I would take out of it. Yeah, you kind of feel a little bit heartless sometimes having that perspective because I'm the same as you. I'm like, I'm not worried. Of course, I'm concerned about some stuff, business, family, life, all that kind of stuff. But you know, there's loads of people online that I love conversation with and they're like, I'm worried, I'm feeling anxious, I'm watching the news, I'm wondering what's going to happen. And I'm like, I'm not because I'm just focused on what I can control. And you feel heartless. It's almost like in this time, you should worry, you should feel anxious because it's unprecedented. But the problem is all that leaves is that you're just in a negative place. You have a negative mindset, you feel angry, you're not sleeping well. So actually, while it might be a bit heartless and honestly, it's selfish, but I think you have to be in that time to look after your own mental health. I think it is very hard though, because you know I've had that approach, and and you know I've learned a lot from 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 my wife about, about empathy and understanding, because you know sportsman's mentality uh, or our similar mentality is very different to a lot of people. You know I I don't have I haven't ever had anxiety. You know, Chloe suffers from anxiety. And is very you know it's been very honest about that. Um, you know, and it, and, it, and unfortunately, telling someone with anxiety to worry about what you control is is is, is similar as telling someone with depression to the fuck up. Like it ain't gonna. Yeah. It's, it's it's an intangible thing to develop, and I think a lot of people are, um, you know, like you said, are in that in that boat. And sometimes it does appear to be quite hard on, on, online to be able to say that. But actually, I, I would challenge a lot of these people to have ever done. Uh, anything to help with that mindset like I didn't always have that mindset you know I, I saw sort of seen a sports psychologist since you know the age of kind of 19 to, to 35 you know I, I get therapy now for, for um, you know to deal with all sorts of things and I think it's I think it's a really important thing and you know while it was great for me as a rugby player I've had to unwind some of that stuff and be more have more empathetic be more empathetic with other people but actually one of the things we never develop is our, is our mental health. And people going around worrying stuff, you know, a tool to deal with, with concerns is, 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 is literally worrying about what you control, it, you know, and being able to do that and understanding why that mechanics works. And so that's why I think in this period of time, you know, if you are prone to these concerns, if you are prone to, to all these kind of, and have mental health issues, first thing I would say, I mean, it wasn't the reason we came on the podcast, but I think it's an important message, is reach out to someone, reach out to friend and family if you're not ready to take that step to speak to a professional. But actually, people are doing Skype conference stuff all the time. And I think some of these people will have these problems, but have never been given the tools or never sought to give the tools. So, you know, a lot of people will change their change their body because they're concerned about what they look like in a mirror. But the fact that when the lights go out at night, they've got a voice in their head, they're over anxious, they're panicking, they're not addressing things, they're, they're, you know, they're not dealing with things, is, I think, a real problem. And actually, this period of time is going to really... Um, test people test people's relationships because you know you don't normally spend this amount of time with your friends and family you know, with your family that's why you've got friends because you can't choose your family and uh, unfortunately you can't see your friends you're just left with your family yeah mate sage advice um i'll wrap up the show in a sec because it's nearly three o'clock i know you've got to go dude um all i would say to build on that is when i often have conversations about mental health online and you summarize the point with like literally how much sort of effort have you put to solve that problem 
And quite often I'll say, you know, someone will say to me, oh, I'm, I'm having a mental health, you know, I feel anxious, I feel depressed. And I'm like, well, what steps have you currently taken over the last couple of years to resolve that? And they'll quite often say, well, I've been to my GP and they give me some medication and I've been referred to a psychotherapist and had a couple of sessions and it didn't really work. And, you know, and, and I've just sort of tried to be positive and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I'll be honest, that's not really a lot of effort. Like I've um, probably read, read, uh, 50 nutrition books. I probably read 50 books on training and nutrition. And at the start of that journey, I didn't know anything about nutrition, but I needed to sort it out because I was obese and overweight and unhealthy. At the beginning of my training career, I didn't know how to train. All I knew was to lace up and go for a run and play sport. And you're the same in sport. Like you've been to many therapists, many strength coaches, many nutritionists, many different people because one person didn't solve all the problems. One book didn't solve all the problems. So I say to people, if you feel that your mental health could be stronger, go and read literally 10 books on mental health. Like throw mm. shit at the problem because you'll probably find one one paragraph or one book or one author that will literally resonate with you and a couple of pennies will drop and it will lead you on that path to, we'll call it recovery or knowledge or empowerment. Um, you know, one session or one book or one exposure is never going to solve these things. So I am a big fan of mastery to solve a self problem to move you forward. And I, I do genuinely think more effort could be put into that by some people. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think you, you, you've hit the nail on the head. I, I would also just add to that that you know, you, you know, you didn't you didn't build big arms by doing two bicep sessions. You know what I mean? So when people, you know, the brain is, is you know, is something that needs constant work and development, and it plays tricks on you. You know, you have moments of levity where you feel brilliant, and you think, I'm solved, I'm fixed, I don't need to go and get therapy anymore, I don't need to go and talk about these things. And then you'll have something that will trigger you. It's an ongoing process, just as physical development is, nutritional development is, mental development is a, is a never-ending path. And I think when people go and get booked in to see psychologists, therapists, whatever you want to, whoever it is, you know, if you don't click with that person straight away, or you don't feel empty, you know, you move on. You know, you don't, you don't, you've got guns your head saying you've got to talk to this one person all the time. But it, I think, you know, people forget that, that your mind controls, you know, everything you do. And it doesn't matter what your body looks like, doesn't matter who your partner is, doesn't matter how much money you have in a bank. If your head ain't right, uh, you know, and you've done nothing to, to fix it, you're basically wasting your, wasting your time. And I, I think, you know, put it, you know, I saw this great analogy, really. Was that they said that you know Usain? But again, this could be fake news. But it's essentially something I read. But the, the point still stands: is that they said that Usain Bolt, right? If uh, Jesse Owens had run on use uh, the same track as Usain Bolt, using the same shoes, the same technology, the same weather, the same training, and things like that, he would have finished half a stride behind Usain Bolt. Bear in mind, Jesse running on a standard track in, in flat, flash plimp soles, in you know, in in you know, with a whole lot of Nazis on on top of him <laughs> and everything else. Uh, you know, with, with, with not sports science, not the, the leggings and everything else, like not the, the purpose-built bouncy track. Uh, but, you know, so if in future everything is leveled out and technology becomes such a, a prevalence and the, the playing field between athlete, athletes is so leveled out, what becomes the def defining factor? Well, it's not going to be shoe technology. It's not going to be clothes technology. It's going to be the mental mindset. That's going to be the difference of how people... Uh, to get the upper hand, it's going to be your mental stability, it's going to be your mental strength, it's going to be coming through adversity, dealing with injury, having the ultimate mindset, dealing with pressure. And, you know, we talked about England losing the, the, the World Cup, you know, and, and I saw the preparation. You know, it was done nothing to do with, um, uh, you know, them playing the game the week before against Eugene and playing the best game ever. You know, they look physically right. You know, there must have been something psychologically in, in enough players that didn't quite click and that was the difference between the sides and I know Eddie Jones works on it more so than any other person but you know in this period of time mental health is going to be massively uh, prevalent and I just think exactly what you said read around the subject you know if you can't be asked to read there's plenty of YouTube TED talks uh, you know you can get free online therapy with people who give you you know two or three sessions for free and it's a matter you don't have to cry like a lot of men I think are worse than everyone think you have to go into therapy and suddenly reveal something that happened to you in the past. And if nothing happened to you in the past, you feel like you've got nothing to say. It's as simple as, do you know what? Uh, for, you know, I, I've got a really bad temper. I lose my shit all the time. I, I, I don't know why. How, how, how do we sort it out? You know, every time something goes wrong and I make a mistake, I fucking have a meltdown. All I can think about is that mistake. Well, let's, let's address that. Let's, let's fix that. And that's, that's the mentality, I think. Mm. And that is the secret to success.
I think. The, the, <laughs> well, it is. Like, if you bring the right mindset to anything, you're fucking, you're going to crush it. You're going to succeed it. Mm. And it might take you a year, might take you five. Um, and that that's the reality of, uh, of reaching peak levels in something or anything. Um, dude, lockdown life. Uh, there's some things that people could sort of seek that you've done to help with that. You've got a home workout book, a couple of recipe things. Like, where can people find the lockdown magic of James Haskell? So, so the first thing is, um, I've got a, a book called Perfect Fit, which is basically like a training bible that like, essentially has got an eight-week training plan for just body weight stuff done at home. You get that on Amazon. That's called Perfect Fit. I've got a cookbook called Cooking for Fitness, which it's got all the recipes. You know, and again, they're simple recipes that don't require you to go and see a witch doctor to buy something you've never heard of that costs about two thousand pounds to sprinkle. It's all very simple recipes. And lastly, if you're looking for tunes. And music, you know, I do a live stream every Saturday or Sunday um, on my YouTube channel, which is under James Haskell. Um, and I've got a house music uh, house music podcast called James Haskell Back Row Radio. So, you know, Back Row Radio, live music, perfect fit, cooking for fitness, all those things will help you get through this quarantine. Um, and if Mrs. is driving you mad, get some headphones in and just nod your head to House of Rugby. Mate, love it. Well, uh, all of that will be listed in the show notes. People do check it out. I'm a big fan of James's work. I've known James for a long time. Uh, really value his perspective and insight. And hopefully you've got uh, some wisdom there today. More than anything, maybe something to think about, a couple of tweaks to make uh, with what you're doing at home and stuff. Um, mate, Haskell, I was very closely, and it would have been the wrong thing, inspired by you um, I also love music, but none of that house shite. Um, a massive fan of a <laughs> massive fan of quite uh, atmospheric drum and bass. Um, oh, wow, I did not see that coming. Right? <laughs> none of the hardcore stuff. I love like yeah. really good vocals. Anyway, um, do you know Net Sky? Yes. Yeah. Well, he did a live set last week from his bedroom in like Belgium or whatever, and it was incredible. And then I was, saw a, a clip of you on. Uh, uh, Instagram and I was like yes I can do that with my free time I'm going to learn how to become a DJ I can't wait I'm going to do Friday night sessions in lockdown and I was like don't be a dick you've had your first daughter like you've only really got like three hours a day to work at the moment anyway but um yeah if I pop up um as a DJ that that's why I found a spare two hours a day to learn how to do it mate I'd love to do it I think it'd be quality right if you listen also you know atmospheric drum and bass that's a niche for you you know every everyone does something different you know Chloe wishes I did 90s hip-hop she's a 90s hip-hop girl you know I tried to DJ hip-hop for a bit I tried to learn and it's very very complicated it's, it's, it's a different kind of um music format to 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 house music so I, I found that quite uh, difficult but you know what There'll be an online course, my friend. You know, you, you can opt in and out whenever you need. And also, the simple thing is, obviously, in this time of, 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 of difficult financial and with a cure, it might not be an idea, but you can buy a controller, use your laptop. You've got an existing laptop. Software comes free with a controller. Look at it, 200, 300 quid. You, you could be you just get a Beats pill to plug it into. You can have a mini rave. Or if you can't play because your, your missus and daughter are driving you mad, put your headphones on, mix in your head. It's the way forward, my friend. Boom. I say atmospheric drum and bass because when you usually say drum and bass, people think of like doom, 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 doom. Like yeah. drum and bass isn't like that anymore. If you listen, like drum and bass is on adverts now. Like drum and bass is big news. Like hospital records is big news these days. Anyway, I'm waffling. Um, I feel I have to justify <laughs> it because people usually yeah. go, oh, I didn't Mate, think you'd be no, into drum and bass. Mate, I love techno. I, you know, my, my real passion is I, I, I will work. So later I will work to, you know, one, you know, 128 techno, just like real aggressive. That just like sounds like someone in a factory going, dum, dum, <laughs> dum, like it, you'd just be like, what is this bullshit? Um, but I just quite like it. That's my personal preference. I'd never DJ that, but you know, someone like, I mean, the thing is, Carl Cox has made techno cool along, you know, for 50 years. But you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think, Jesus, I want to relax the techno. I'll go, I could go to sleep listening to techno. Um, so each to their own. So atmospheric drum and bass, sir. Carry on. Oh, boom. Mate, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, for people that have uh, tuned in, whether you're familiar with the show or whether you're new and you've popped over from James's Social or something, uh, hello. Hope you've enjoyed the show. If you think others could benefit from it, please share it with them. Shoot it over on an email or retweet it or whatever. Um, it's all hopefully good free advice here and will help people through what is a weird time. Um, mate, James, keep doing what you're doing, buddy. Um, big Thank fan. You, mate. Big fan. Um, and yes, 
I will see you next week. I've no idea what the show is. I did four in a row because I was on paternity leave and now I've come back and I've no idea what's going on. So hopefully I'll recalibrate uh, and more good stuff will be coming. Anyway, James, last thank you, legend. Cheers, mate. And everyone else, all that leaves me to say is go and have an awesome day. Goodbye. <laughs>